back with Cyrus Pattinson. Unfortunately, my phone cut off in mid-interview. Fantastic use of technology. This is why I'm looking for sponsors, everyone. Put so, there, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So you were touching on the bronze medal, Cyrus. No, I definitely. Uh, I think it was a bit unjustly uh, fought Poland and Hungary in the previous round to get a secure medal, and I fought Hungary again, number one representative in a semi-final, and and uh, I never ever use the term robbed, but in my eyes, I won the won the fight. And I got beat on a two-one split, and the whole place was an uproar. I had coaches from from everywhere, even Hungarian coaches, were saying, "I don't know how it happened, but it is what it is. You got to just just sell off and carry on." Isn't it? Bite the bullet. But it hasn't stopped you. It hasn't no. altered what you want to do. Um, you competed for the Lion Hearts in two thousand and sixteen. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Uh, very character building. Like mm -hmm. I. Had a, uh, I've been stuck twice for the Lion Hearts. First time I did was my debut. I've just gone to JB. Uh, I'll not mention any names, but someone turned into camp, didn't want the fight, and I had four days notice. And I said, Look, I'm a fighter. Take the fight, that's what I'm here for. Took the fight. Uh, I was winning the fight, got split, got cut, sort of rushed things, inexperience, got caught, got stopped. Uh, but it's, it's it's good like it's good setup because it's a lot more like the pro longer rounds better for me I like to to warm into things and grind people down and and chip away and uh, I like it's it's more televised and stuff you've got a day before win it's not like normally in like some tournament out in Poland and that you just it's like in and out and there's not just didn't really big it up the line has to do so. It gives you a little taste of how it's going to be when you go pro in it. Seems like a decent little uh, setup like the Lion Horse, doesn't it? No, and I follow them on good. Twitter and they're yeah. always working hard, yeah. No, so. it is good. Yeah. Because they really just draft them in from JB Boxing, so it's just JB Boxing, but we'll get a few uh, overseas fighters. Uh, but no, it's a good setup. So the next step for you will be you're focusing on Tokyo in 2020 at the moment um, obviously we know in your division at the JB setup you've got a very tough kind of stable mate in um, in Pat McCormick would you would you be fair to say that Pat's just kind of that nudge ahead of you at the moment no of course like he's uh, been on <coughs> JB a lot more a lot longer than me and he's a club mate as well we're both boxed for Burnley um, he done a lot more as a like a youth and a, like a junior, uh, there's not really much more to say. Like so, he's a lot more experienced than me. He got the nod to go to the Commonwealths. So was mainly in competing. He went to the Commonwealths, even the Commonwealths. I didn't even go to the Commonwealths, and I was still rated number two in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. So that speaks for itself. Uh, but I've always had like a like a competitive group as a welterweight. I mean, I had Echo and Josh Kelly. Uh, for the for the Rio cycle, and I was ranked number one. I went to the qualifiers, didn't qualify. Fellow Kelly went. He qualified, took my hat off him. In hindsight, I think it's the best thing that could have happened because I probably would have turned pro straight away after. Uh, I was one fight away from qualifying. Probably would have turned pro straight after, and I'm nowhere near than the boxer that I am now. So. I think you're learning all the time, you've just sometimes it's blessing in disguise really and it was just I've, I've always said as well like I wouldn't like focus so much on like a materialistic goal like the Olympics or like a, a competition I think because no matter it's about the long haul it's like it's about developing all the time and in and, and two yeah I'm going to be a different fighter again and, and then it's all about being going to professional ranks and that and getting belts and Making making a future for me and my family, you know. Yeah. So. And welterweight, it's you know, it's you look at the welterweight boxers in the world now. It's it's one of the toughest divisions out there, isn't it? You know. So no, is that where you would want to campaign if you turned over? One hundred percent. Yeah. Big fights. Yeah, big fights, big names. So for just for obviously the the Olympic process, I mean, um, you know, like you're still in, you're still there, and. 
you're still in with a, a great shout I feel there uh, but how does the kind of selection process work I know I was talking to was it Lee Murgatroyd who's the press right lad down in Team GB and he was kind of giving us like an overview of how it worked and that but with you being in there um, do you want to just kind of see how, how that kind of works and <clears throat> to be honest, I'm not 100% sure right. on myself. Like, cause yeah. I, I know like, you, you can go to like, Europeans or Worlds or whatever and you can get points now. And you can qualify through getting a certain amount of points through medals or whatever. I don't know how it works. But as far as I knew beforehand, it was just like JB would select you for a qualifier. I say those three years on at 69. They say you're performing the best at the minute or you're training the hardest or whatever. So then you will qualify, and then the top three or top five of that qualifier qualify. If you don't, they say uh, they think they pick again who who they think deserve to go or who's fit or, and then if you qualify, that's how you qualify. And but now they've got like a, a point scoring system as well, which makes makes it better for the the top, like the elite, the world class, so they qualify and they don't even need to go to like the qualifiers for it. But, it's so elaborate, some of the things, isn't it, in boxing? And I keep trying to explain this to people who who aren't in it or don't know much about it, and I say it's something better off just not asking us because nah. I can't I can't explain some of the things. Like, even just the governing bodies that we were talking about mm-hmm. before, I, they, I couldn't making, explain uh, it to people. They're making new rules all the time, man. They're just chopping change. I think they're getting rid of 49 and 60 kilo weight classes oh, yeah, as well yeah. to bring in women's weight classes. But that's just another crazy thing because I think... Like, why not just add two weight classes on for the women? Why don't, like, because from 50, I, I think they changed it 56 to 57 and 64 to 63, but still a massive jump. And, like, I know lads that kill themselves to get 60 and, like, they had, like, a massive advantage, but now it's been taken away or it's just, it's just crazy, isn't it? It is, it's difficult. And, like I say, it is difficult to try and explain to outsiders, but. It's just better off just not getting involved in the politics of it and just no, watching the fight, isn't no, it? Definitely. So with the northeast boxing scene at the minute, um, obviously I've got to I've got to mention uh, Steve Wraith because um, this is the reason I'm in this position at the moment. Cyrus has given me this opportunity. Um, Phil Jeffries is working alongside Phil Jeffries, who they've formed yeah, Pro Box Northeast now. They're putting on all the shows up in Newcastle. And obviously, um, we've seen the success in the recent matchroom card of um, Lewis Ritson and you know, uh, like lads like Glenn Foote, Tommy Ward, Josh Kelly, who you mentioned before. Do you think it's the prime time now for Northeast boxing? Uh, I think it's coming in a lot more now than it ever has been for a lot of years, and I think it's going to get even better and grow stronger. There's a lot of talent in the Northeast. Uh, I mean. Barely, I've got six lads on JB squad uh, now, so that's that speaks for itself as well. Uh, and again, two year after this Olympic cycle, I think a lot of us will turn pro, and we'll probably just be filling out shows just for Northeast lads. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. an exciting time now for boxing. It is, yeah, and it's there's a lot more interest in it around the region now than what there has been for quite yeah, some time, isn't it? That's good. It's yeah. good. I think it would be criminal not to mention uh, one of the lads who are trained with, Jordan Minchell, um, another tricky southpaw. Can you remember sparring him, or I think you, did you just compete against each yeah, other? Or what uh, was Jordan like? Because we we see him in the gym, and he says he's not the not the boxer that he was, but he's still showing flashes of absolute genius. When I'm watching sometimes, and I'm thinking, how the how the hell have you blocked that and countered that? And but he says he's not anywhere near what he used to be. So what was he like? What was Jordan like? Nah, like. Uh, <clears throat> I fought him a lot of years ago. It was uh, I think it was in the CYPs as a youth or a junior, and uh, but it's hard hard to say when you're a junior. And he he won on a split decision, so he's got that one over his anyway. Oh, no, uh, but he was, he was a southpaw. I was orthodox at the time. Right. And uh, I wasn't that burly, and uh, just just like any of the other lads that I was training with, but it was just like a flashy southpaw and. I'm, 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 I've been to Perth Green show last time I seen him, I had no trophies and that, so oh, right. that was a nice invitation just to give back, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's what, I think that's what strikes me is it, is it being like a, a family orientated sport, isn't it? We're all kind of in it together, and there's like what we were saying before, there's no kind of egos when it comes to helping people and giving back to the sport. We all try to do our best, and 
obviously you lads like yourself who have excelled you know it's nice to see that coming from yourself as well you know so yeah, that's a it's like a big fulfilling thing for me like and i get a lot of satisfaction out of it uh, I lot of do a lot I do a lot of stuff voluntary uh, but it's all voluntary really uh, I don't really I don't publicize a lot of the stuff that I do uh, but it's just fulfilling for me and I enjoy doing it fills your soul up doesn't it no nah, definitely next in competition uh, it's not been disclosed yet from JB like but it'll probably be around November I think November time so I'll probably find out in the next month as well is that going to be on a certain event or is it just going to be kind of tune-ups or uh i think it's just like it'll be like a like a just a normal tournament really right and then look next year for the european european games and then the championships excellent so after two breakdowns in communication with technology we finally got there cyrus um just like to say thank you very much and obviously we couldn't get a cup of coffee because the kitchen was out of order the day that was the whole point in coming here I thought to get a nice cup of coffee and it's windy and cold outside so we've ended up drinking water instead but from what they're doing to the pub inside it looks like it's all right now doesn't it and they're doing it's some right, like, quite through, yeah, <laughs> yeah it is i think they've put in the uh, naughty section is there any um sponsors or kind of people that are behind no, the scenes that you would uh, like to mention 100 uh pill frost LNA, Borderline Tatum Collective have been there from day one. Um, like and just for the continued support as well. Like it's a massive massive boost and uh, I appreciate it a lot and for just to continue because it means a lot to us. And uh, ambitions if twenty twenty doesn't happen? Uh, 2020 whether it happens or not like I'm still going to progress and I'm going to still do what I'm going to do at the end of the day and I'm going to succeed either way I'm going to be fine I'll be again and uh, just make a life for my family and for people I love and for myself so that's what it's about top boy we've even managed to out talk the wondrous Joe Lowe's so he'd be forming about it and honestly he'd be on the phone getting us in for another one soon so he can beat you well thank you very much on behalf on behalf of Box and Viper Media. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you and hopefully catch up again soon. No, thank you very much.